Hello everyone, in the next video I will show you how we can recover the password of a Hikibedian step by step, which we have forgotten. In this specific case, the battery has been changed and it lost the time, so we will want to recover the password because even though we were using it normally in the mobile application where the password was stored, later in order to change the time, to fix the time, we could never do it because we had forgotten the password. That's why this process is necessary. Well, password recovery is generally done in many ways. I will show you a way that involves upgrading. We will upgrade the recorder, reset it to its initial state, and then create a new password from scratch. And since we cannot upgrade through the browser, nor with a USB stick on the recorder, because we don't have the password, we will use the DFTP server, which I will explain to you step by step what exactly it is and how we will work with it. Okay, let's first connect the recorder to the computer. Okay, we will use an Ethernet cable, which will be connected directly, directly without a router in between, directly from the computer to the recorder. And we will use a tool from Hike Vision to find out where our recorder is, what IP it has, which I will put down in the description for you to download. Here is the program. We open it now and see here immediately that it shows us that a recorder is connected above with this IP here, 192.168.1.100.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
The second is the DFTP server that we will download. And the third is from where we will download the recorder's upgrade file, according to its model. These are the files we need. Well, I will tell you that the DFTP server we will download is these files here. It is inside this folder. I have put it. And inside this folder, we should also drop the recorder's upgrade. to be done. So these files belong to DFTP and from here we will download upgrade the recorder accordingly to its model. We will write down the recorder's model on this site and download a file that is for this specific one here and I will drop it inside the same folder with the DFTP server where we basically do copy paste the same folder and from here on, we will now open the .exe file that DFTP contains. Right here. So we will proceed. From here, and we see over here that it shows us the IP of the recorder. This IP is the one we defined before, so at this point we will say that the DFTP for the recorder is not in this network. 192.168.1, but it is in 192.0.0.64 for the recorder. So we also, we need to set up our computer to be on this network in order for the server to function. Otherwise, the computer will not be able to communicate with the recorder at this IP. So we will go back to the network settings on our computer, and we will now adjust the new IP over here. Let me show you. So the old IP we said is 192.168.1.222. We will change it now and make it 192.0.128. The subnet mask will remain the same as it is. This when will take again, and now we are on the same network with the recorder, so we press OK again. We exit from here, and we will open the DFTP server again, the out here. So we press the DFTP server again. And we see here that it has the new IP of the recorder. So now all we have to do is to unplug the recorder from the socket and plug it back in. And if all the steps have been done correctly, we will see the following message to start. You see here it says that it has started the upgrade. It says to transfer the upgrade file of the recorder from the computer to the recorder. It is the file that we have placed inside the same folder that will be transferred with the DFTP server. We see here the messages it produces and when it shows successful, below it will be ready, wait a little, so here the upgrade is completed. The file has been uploaded, and all we need to do now is to restart the recorder. We will restart it and open the tool again. To see on which IP it is located. So we open the tool, we refresh. And we see that its new IP found in the recorder is the one I told you is the server. And if we respond above to this IP, we will see right next to it that tells us to enter a master code. To create, to generate a code. So here at this point, we write whatever code we want. We create a new code up to this character for this specific
I understand here, and we are ready. We have created, we see here, the code on our recorder. Now the only thing we can do here, we can do from here, that is we can enter the IP it had again, the initial IP it had. So we click away the DGP. And we put here the IP it had at the beginning, the 192.168.1.100. It was. In the gateway, we will put the IP of the router that will connect. In this case, 192.168.1.100. And the HDB port is 6000 we had before. So if we have done it correctly, and we enter the password down here, where it says here, we should enter the password we have created. Logically, it will take the settings. We will go to do a refresh on top. And we see that it has indeed taken the settings. If we click here above, we will see it next to it. Now to see it in the browser, In Internet Explorer, that is, we will have to change our network settings again. We don't see it here. You see that it doesn't exist. We can't see it again because we have to go back to the network settings. And let's share again to enter the virus network. We will go back here to Ethernet, change the Cosmos, and we will put the IP 192.168.1.128 to enter the same network, that is. And now if we press to exit from here and press again the IP on the browser, as we press before 192.168.1100, up, down, 0 We will enter the recorder. We will press the admin code, the code we created before. And if everything is correct, we will enter the recorder. We see here, it is interesting. We have entered its settings. We have entered the recorder. We have recovered the code and can now rebuild the recorder from scratch. If we look above the time settings, we will be able to set the time that suits us. And of course, the recorder has been reset we will have to rebuild all the parameters we had before. So that was the recovery. I believe I may have confused you a bit with these IPs and networks and all that. Whatever questions you have, you can write to me in the comments and I will try to answer you. Down in the description, I will write you the links where you can find me for any questions you have. If you liked the video, Please like and subscribe so we don't miss the news. Joy to everyone.